Welcome to part 5 of The Bishop's Candlesticks by Norman MacKinnell. This will be the last part, so I want you to listen very carefully to how the play ends. In the previous lesson, we got an idea that the convict had stolen the precious candlesticks. So Persom is very angry. She calls for her brother and told him to call the police. But the bishop said, I cannot have this man sent back to prison. Okay, the bishop does not want the convict to be caught again. So he said, I have to be blamed for this. Okay, he said, my punishment is just. I have to be punished for tempting the convict into stealing the candlesticks. So that is where we end in part four. Now let's continue. No, brother, you are wrong. If you won't tell the police, I will. I will not stand by and see you robbed. I know you are my brother and my bishop and the best man in all friends. But you are a fool, I tell you, a child, and I will not have your goodness abused. I shall go and inform the police. Since the bishop did not want to inform the police, Persom was very angry. She said, Brother, you are wrong. If you don't tell the police, I will. Okay, she's afraid that her brother will be robbed again in the future if he does not report this. She said, You are my brother, you are my bishop, and you are also the best man in all friends. But you are also a fool. Okay, she tells him, you are just like a child. So she tries to go out and inform the police. Then the bishop said, Stop, Persom. The candlesticks were mine. They are his now. It is better so. He has more need of them than I. My mother would have wished it so had she been here. Persom, but... As Persom was about to leave, the bishop stops her. He said, the candlesticks were mine, but now they are his. So, I am happy about it, and my mother would also have wished it had she still been here. Okay? So, but Persom was not willing. She said, but... And as this was going on, there was a great knocking at the door. Surgeon. Monsignor, Monsignor, we have something for you. May we enter? The bishop. Enter, my son. Enter, surgeon, and three gendarmes with the convict bound. So from outside the door, there was a surgeon calling out for the bishop. He said, Sir, we have something for you. May we enter? Then the bishop calls them in. It was the surgeon and three other policemen with the convict tied. Persom. Ah, so they have caught you, villain, have they? Surgeon. Yes, madam. We found this scoundrel slinking around the road, and as he won't give any account of himself, we arrested him on suspicion. Holy Virgin, isn't he strong? And didn't he struggle? While we were securing him, these candlesticks fell out of his pockets. Persom seizes them lovingly. I remembered the candlesticks of Monsignor the Bishop, so we brought him here that you might identify them, and then we lock him up. The Bishop and the convict have been looking at each other, the convict with dogged defiance. Bishop, but, but I don't understand. This gentleman is my very good friend. Surgeon, your friend, Monsignor, Holy Virgin, well, Bishop, yes, my friend, he did me the honor to sup with me tonight, and I, I have given him the candlesticks. Surgeon, you gave him, him your candlesticks, Holy Virgin. Seeing the convict along with the policeman, Persom was very happy. She cried out, saying, Ah, they have caught you. Then the surgeon said, Yes, madam, we found this man walking around the road, and since he wouldn't give any account of himself, we arrested him on suspicion. And as we were trying to tie him up, he struggled so much that these candlesticks fell out of his pockets. 
and the surgeon continued on saying that I remembered the candlesticks of Monsignor de Bishop. So we brought him here so that you might identify them. Okay, so the surgeon said once you identify the candlesticks, we thought of locking him up again. Then as they were talking, the bishop and the convict have been looking at each other. And the convict was, you know, feeling very guilty. The bishop then said something very surprising. He shocked everyone in the room by telling the surgeon that the convict is his friend. Okay, he said, I don't understand. Why are you tying up this man? He is my very good friend. When the surgeon was confused, he said, Your friend, Monsignor? The bishop said, Yes, he is my friend. He even had supper with me tonight, and the candlesticks are gifted by me. Then the surgeon said, You, you gave him the candlesticks? Now why is he so shocked? Now the candlesticks were very precious and dear to the bishop. Everyone in the locality knows this. And him giving this man the candlesticks as gifts was something to be surprised about. In the next page, that's page 87, the bishop said in a very serious mood, Remember, my son, that she is holy. Now why did he say this to the surgeon? Look at page 86, the last word that the surgeon said, Holy Virgin. Okay, he was swearing and using the name Holy Virgin because he was so shocked. So this is why the bishop said, do not take the name of the Virgin Mary in vain. Okay, he said, remember my son that she is holy. Then the surgeon uh, asked Monsignor for forgiveness, the bishop. And now, I think you may let your prisoner go, surgeon. But he won't show me his papers. He won't tell me who he is, the bishop. I have told you he is my friend, surgeon. Yes, that's all very well, but bishop, he is your bishop's friend. Surely that is enough, surgeon. Well, but bishop, surely a pause. The surgeon and the bishop look at each other. The bishop then told the surgeon to let the prisoner go. The surgeon was unwilling to do so at first, he said. But Monsignor, this man does not have any proof that he is a good man. Then the bishop again told him that he had told him that he is his friend, so he must trust the bishop. Hearing this, the surgeon let him loose. Okay? This is how the bishop saved the convict from going back to prison. Convict. Very slowly, as if in a dream. You told them you had given me the candlesticks. Given me them by God. Persom. Shaking her fist at him and hugging the candlesticks to her breast. Oh, you scoundrel, you pitiful scoundrel. You come here and are fed and warmed. And, and you thief, steal from your benefactor? Oh, you blackguard. After the surgeon and his men left the house, the convict very slowly, as if in a dream, told the bishop, You had told them that you had given me the candlesticks? Okay, he was shocked that a man from whom he had stolen the candlesticks would save him. So he was really shocked. Hearing this, Persom shaking her fist, okay, and hugging the candlesticks tightly, said, Oh, you scoundrel, you scoundrel, you come here, we feed you, we give you blankets, and you steal from us. How can you? Okay, she was very, very angry. Bishop, Persom, you are overwrought. Go to your room. Persom, what? And leave you with him to be cheated again? Perhaps murdered? No, I will not. Bishop, with slight severity. Persom, leave us. I wish it. She looks hard at him, then turns towards her door. Persom, well, if I must go, at least I'll take the candlesticks with me. Bishop, more severely. 
Persom, place the candlesticks on the table and leave us. Persom, I will not. Then the bishop loudly with great severity said, I, your bishop, command it. Persom does so with great reluctance and exits. The bishop could sense how angry Persom is. So, before she lose control, he insisted that she should leave the room. But Persom was unwilling to do so. She said, What, leave you with this man to be cheated again or maybe murdered? Then the bishop said, Persom, you must leave us alone. Then she said, Well, if I go, I must at least take the candlesticks with me. Then the bishop, with severity, okay, said, Persom, place the candlesticks on that table and leave us. She still says that she will not leave them. She said, I will not. Then the bishop loudly, with great severity, said, I, your bishop, command it. Hearing this, Persom leaves them reluctantly. Convict, Monsignor, I'm glad I didn't get away with them. Curse me, I am. I'm glad. Bishop, now won't you sleep here? See, your bed is ready. Okay, so after Persom left, the convict thanks the bishop for saving him. He said he's glad that he didn't go back to prison. He thanks the bishop. And the bishop offers him to sleep again that night. But he said, okay, no. Looking at the candlesticks. No, no, I daren't, I daren't. Besides, I must go on. I must get to Paris. It is big. And I, I can be lost there. They won't find me there. And I must travel at night. Do you understand? So when the bishop offered the convict to sleep that night, the convict immediately said that he cannot do that. Okay, looking at the candlesticks, he knows that he may be tempted again. So he said, I must go on. I must get to Paris. It is big and I can be lost there. Okay, he said, I have plans to go to Paris because I can find a new job there. I can find a new life there. So he decides to go on and travel that night. Bishop, I see. You must travel by night. Convict? I, I didn't believe there was any good in the world. One doesn't when one has been in hell. But somehow I, I know you're good and, and it's a queer thing to ask, but, but could you, would you bless me before I go? I, I think it would help me. I, okay, he hangs his head very shamefacedly and the bishop makes sign of the cross and murmurs blessing. The convict tries to speak, but a sob almost chokes him. Good night. He hurries towards the door. The convict had one request before he leaves for Paris. He told the bishop that he never believed that there was any good in the world. Why is he saying this? Remember he was in prison, and in the prison he was treated like a wild beast. So he never believed that there was any good in this world until he met the bishop. So he asked the bishop if he could bless him one last time before he leaves. The bishop makes sign of the cross and blesses him. He, the convict, tries to speak, but he almost cried. And he finally said good night and hurries towards the door. Bishop, stay, my son. You have forgotten your property, giving him the candlesticks. Convict, you mean me? You want me to take them? Bishop, please, they may help you. The convict takes the candlesticks in absolute amazement. And, my son, there is a path through the woods at the back of this cottage, which leads to Paris. It is a very lonely path, and I have noticed that my good friends, the gendarmes, do not like lonely paths at night. It is curious. Convict? Ah, thanks, thanks, Monsignor. I, I, he sobs. Ah, I'm a fool, child to cry. 
but somehow you have made me feel that that it is just as if something had come into me as if i were a man again and not a wild beast the door at back is open and the convict is standing in it as the convict was about to leave the bishop stops him he said my son you had forgotten your property then he gives him the candlesticks the convict was very confused he said you mean you mean me you want me to take them then the bishop said please please take them this might help you to start your life so the convict took the candlesticks in absolute amazement the bishop not only gave him the candlesticks but he also showed him the path towards paris okay he said my son there is a lonely path behind this cottage which leads to paris and the gendarmes or the police officers will not find you since this is a lonely path so this is how he finally helps the convict he not only saved him from prison he not only gave him the candlesticks but he also helped him to go to paris through a safe path then the convict thanks the bishop again and he starts to cry he said i am just like a child but you have made me a new man i feel i am not a wild beast any more the door at back is open and the convict is standing in it bishop putting his hand on his shoulder always remember my son that this poor body is a temple of the living god convict with great awe the temple of the living god i remember and he leaves the bishop closes the door and goes quietly to the prie dieu in the window he sinks on his knees and bows his head in prayer just when the convict was about to leave the bishop told him one last important thing he placed his hands on the shoulder of the convict and said my son always remember that your body is a temple of the living god so with great amazement the convict said i will always remember that so finally the bishop closes the door and bows his head in prayer finally we come to the end of the play and it leaves us a very important message that tells us that we can be a source of blessing to people in need